Yeah. <laughs> 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 See, you ain't got that with DJ Loopy Lou. Like, it's, it's a bit awkward, isn't it? It's like, I did think it's I like in your face, see. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Can we, is that all right there? Can you hear me? We can hear you loud and clear. Cool, let's go. <laughs> so, yes, Mac 10. Thank How you, you so much. Thank you, thank you for coming in and blessing me. Um, so, I gave like a brief introduction to you. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know if you want to tell us a bit more about yourself. Um, who are you? Who is DJ Mac 10? Who is DJ Mac 10? <laughs> That's a good question. You know what? I got asked that. Ar recently on a personal one and I, I there was a point where I, I I don't want to get deep too quick but <laughs> <laughs> someone asked me that like who am I like and it's such a deep question but the answer to that question that I gathered it took me some time is that I'm a father I'm a brother I'm a son you know I'm a cousin all of that I'm a family man first yeah but that's not Mac Ten. That's not Mac Ten. That's not Mac Ten. But I need to I need to acknowledge that as well because yeah. it's important for me. And yeah, Mac Ten is me, the DJ. Yeah, and um, so where do you want to start? That. A good one of that. So, how did you get into DJing? Like, where did it all begin? So for me, I started DJing when I was like fifteen. I'd say about fifteen. So my cousin would repair turntables, saw him mixing, I couldn't believe it. I was at a young age, I ended up getting some records, some turntables, learned how to mix. I'm from a music background, my dad's a drummer, always been around music. Um, so yeah, it started from there really, and I got on pirate radio at a really young age. 15. So did you start by yourself, or did you start with Nasty Crew? No, I started, Nasty Crew happened probably five, six years later when I was in my 20s early 20s um i was djing from when i was 15. Okay. yeah that's funny because i was going to actually ask you a question mm -hmm. um so i don't know, actually know what happened with nasty crew it just seemed to i don't know i wasn't yeah. really into the grime scene i was more yeah. into the garage scene so i don't actually know what happened how it phased out yeah but one of the questions was i was going to ask you was like how you felt stepping out so you you, you wouldn't have felt a way stepping out by yourself because you was already doing it by yourself in the beginning yeah 100 percent. i mean i locally i'd already made a name for myself yeah like before I was Mac 10, I was called by my birth name. Um, yeah, which that's is how Matt. I knew you by your birth name. By my birth name, you know what I mean? I, I didn't know if I could say it. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's cool, it's cool. But, um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's documented. I was on radio with MC Kai and it popped up on YouTube. I don't know, it was in 99 or something, 98. And I was on there when I was 16 at the time. Wow. With MC Kai on Magic wow. on the... I shouldn't say, but another station, yeah. yeah. I mean, you yeah, well, did listen to that radio station Yeah, yeah, too, magic, that. magic. I mean, yeah. it was obviously yeah, deja yeah. vu. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're in deja, you know what I mean? But, so yeah. who, you, you mentioned your uncle, but who who inspired you as a DJ? Who was it that who? you kind of was watching? Who was the one that you inspired you? Right, um, I've got to say, Carl Tough and Off yes. When I wanted to take start taking DJing seriously, yeah. yeah. That made me want to DJ. Um, well, I think I was already DJing, but with the style of DJing, yeah. it's the first person I saw sort of being exciting around the turntable, jump in, the chop in, and um, just, yeah, engrossed in the, in what he was doing. And where was your first club booking then? Where did you, when did you Boy. start entering the clubs? Oh my God, we can't, we've got, we're missing out a massive chat. I need Sorry, to explain this. Sorry, it's because we've got time. We uh, got no, no, listen, <laughs> I've got time. I've got time, yeah. I just, I'll skip over it. But prior to going into the clubs, I was walking around East London far with my record bag, playing in whatever house party, getting people to tell your uncle, let me play. You know, it's like yeah. that, put him on, put him on, let him play. Them times it was a whole different culture yeah, back yeah. then of house yeah. party. Yeah. The first club I played in, I probably couldn't remember. It's a good question. Because really? You can't remember the first club? No, I can't. Because I, because I was so engrossed in music, I would carry my bag everywhere, hoping that I'm going to walk into someone's house club okay. wherever with my record box to turn up to clubs parties whoever's party it was with my bag christening wedding rave yeah. whatever i'm taking my bag with me <laughs> and i'm playing <laughs> you get me so that's how i was so i, I genuinely can't can't think so right then what was the, mm. what is your first memory of of being playing in the clubs can you remember I not remember the, like, I genuinely first... can't remember because um i think i remember there's there's two venues in East London ish, yeah. One was Harlequins in Ilford. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
and another one was in 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 legends um yeah, and one that, of them in barking yeah. and i think i feel like the one the one that sticks out to me was in legends because the monitor was there yeah. and then I'd, I'd never played on a loud system before yeah. and i remember realizing that it's different to mixing in my room or in a house party yeah, yeah. or something it's yeah. a lot different when it's that loud <laughs> Um, and that was the first time I went through that, and I thought, "Shit, this is this is hard work." They, it looks easier than it is when it's yeah. loud, um, and yeah, then I had to sort of adapt yeah. to that. Yeah. I mean, why I'm going down the club road is because um, I was saying earlier on to um, Deluxe. Yeah. So I have a bit of a relationship with alcohol. Yeah. And I was saying it's it started. Well, I've always been around alcohol. My family big drinkers and whatever. Yeah. But for me, I think it really started was when I started going into the clubs. And I was young. I was like 14 when I started first yeah, started raving. Yeah, I was yeah. at club space and all them places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A dreading village. <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah. for me, that's when I proper started drinking. Yeah. Um, so that's what I was going to ask you. Was that where you first was introduced to like the drinking and whatever? No, I've got to be honest. Um, first of all, I, I need to say I'm not blaming anyone for my choice of yeah, my yeah. choices in life. It's just, I grew up in a Caribbean household. Exactly what I was saying yeah. as well. And <laughs> it, it was my dad's a drummer. Like I said, they were would rehearse in the house. Yeah. There's a lot of alcohol, cannabis. Yeah. You have rooms full of smoke. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was normal for me yeah. to transition into like smoking weed and, yeah. and drinking. But for me, what I found when I started to do it is that I could act a fool. Because I was so quiet, so yeah. reserved, so I found that a bit of confidence, bit of confidence yeah. I became funny and all of that. Yeah. And um, so yeah, that's 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 looking that's in hindsight, obviously. So is yeah. it was how, how old was you when you first? Like, I don't know what your vices were. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 I didn't, I, I, as, as I was saying to Deluxe, yeah. I didn't even know that you was going through whatever you was going yeah. through. Like I don't know how blunt and how many key words I would say, but I can speak about things. I've got no issues speaking yeah. about them. But um, what was your question again? What was your so, vice? Like what? What was your vice? Is like what? what was well, it when I first I started, was alcohol. Yeah. Um, like I said, alcohol, weed, and then things progressed as I got older, which we'll probably get to. Or yeah, do you want me to speak about? No, it now? Let's talk, this is what we're here to talk yeah. about. Right, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. cool. All right then. So, what? What? I feel like your earlier question was leading up to the music. So I, I. Because again, I've yeah. I've been in the music scene yeah, for a yeah, long yeah, time, yeah. so for me, I've been around it. I've seen it in the clubs. Yeah. That's for like yeah, for yeah. me. That's where I was. It, it kind of started for yeah, me. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, again, it's it's a part of the culture as well. Being in the music industry, mm -hmm. we're surrounded by drugs. We're surrounded by alcohol. It's yeah. all part. Of, it's all part of the story. Yeah, really, yeah, and it's yeah. sex, drugs, and alcohol. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So what what I want to say is. Um, what I do want to say, music wasn't the main reason why, but then it, when I got into music, it fueled my using, yeah? So the reason why I say that is because, obviously, if I'm acting out, I'm a, I'm a young kid, I can't go into clubs mm -hmm. yet, so my social areas was parks and wherever, yeah. you know, just hanging on corners yeah. or going in people's houses when so their parents So how old was you home. when you first started then? Like 13, okay. maybe younger. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's how it started. And then obviously when music got in introduced, I found that smoking weed and drinking, I felt like it enhanced my performance. That's yeah. how I felt. Like yeah. I, I'd be a lot more confident around performing. I'd be more creative when I yeah. smoke. That's was my thought pattern. Um, I mean, a lot of us believe that that is that, yeah. Yeah. Like, it opens up your creativity, but yeah. your creativity is there. Yeah. I mean, I beg to differ now. I definitely don't agree with that now yeah. um but um i mean going through that whole period i, I don't know how fast you want me to go because i could just talk for days about yeah, this stuff okay. yeah so no, you need to slow right. me down you need to right. tell me what direction you want me to go because i'll just keep going well i, I want to yeah. know like where where it all started mm -hmm. um and like obviously you we all start somewhere and mm -hmm. it's like what is it that what was like the turning point where you, where you became addicted and it became it became a problem and the, that's what's the fun part of yeah. it was oh, passed cool so i've i've got to go back a bit for that that's right fine. all right cool so all right let's i'll infuse the music to this as well so i've joined nasty at 20 
whatever age I was, yeah? yeah. And you need to bear in mind, nasty at the time, it's road, everyone's road, they're doing the road, young man road thing. Yeah. And I moved to a different area at that time, just as I joined, yeah? So it was a culture difference. So this area is quite Cockney and laddish, yeah? yeah. Let's just say. And then I'd come back to this area and I'd be a different way. When I went to, the, to my other area, I'd be acting a certain way and start using different was it because types. Because you were around different people then. Yeah, yeah, I was. But I'm not blaming them either. Yeah, yeah. It's me. No, I wanted to. I wanted simple. to maneuver yeah. this way. I wanted to go and use substances over there. Yeah. And then come over here. But you need to think the people that I'm coming over here with in my nasty days, they sell these sort of things. I'm not yeah. saying none of them guys, yeah, yeah. but the people yeah, who yeah, was yeah. around. Yeah, you course. know, they cult culturally, yeah, yeah. they don't talk about these sort of things I'm using too too well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't so, acceptable. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. acceptable. But I know that there is a society that it is yeah. acceptable in, and it's At not. At that time, like, yeah, because and it's changed now. It's, yeah, it's changed. Well, it's 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 majorly changed. Yeah. Yeah. It's majorly changed, and we're not going to. I'll keep yeah, it about we'll me. Stay there. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but basically, that is the beginning of when the secrecy come in and the the shame and guilt is what I like to call it because. Then now I've got to wear a mask in it. I can't show them this side, and then this side I'm playing. So I'm a comedian yeah. I'm wearing a mask. So when I look back, that's when it started. When I can start becoming dishonest, deceitful, and then you know that yeah. sort of stuff. What I've learned now is what kept me. At so it. when you went yeah. over to that side, yeah. Um, what was it? Was it? Was it because it was a different way of life, or was it that it was? It no, was it was. Fun? It was. It was, was, was it I felt like it was fun. Again, what what this thing boils down to? My addiction, my illness. What I like to yeah. call it is me not feeling comfortable in myself. Yeah. So remember, I'm going back. I'm young. I drink. I smoke. Now I feel happy. Now or yeah. happy. I pretend to be happy or whatever. I'm feeling different in it yeah. because I'm not comfortable with me. So if I take another substance and it adds another layer. Now I can talk. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. I'm yapping away, yeah. and I think I'm confident. You lose then, yourself. Yeah, I lose myself. I'm even more. Yeah. So now I'm this. Every time I feel what what is normal to me is uncomfortable. So me sitting here now, like teetotal, before would have felt abnormal. So I need to change that because yeah. I can't sit and look at myself and think, realize, oh shit, I'm actually shy. I'm actually whatever because I don't like feeling like that. So so. so you say confidence, so, but again, at the same time, I'm like, you was going around to all these places with your record box. Like, that takes confidence. Yeah, but I, I didn't realise that then. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I thought I was... See, listen, since I've stopped doing that stuff, I've realised... I went into a rehab with a drug problem and come out with ADHD because I realised that I didn't wasn't lacking confidence or nothing like that. Yeah. I just didn't know that I had some sort of something going on with me I don't know I just didn't know what it was some sort of void now I realize I'm actually quite what's the word not manic but like just, you know me I need to do things all erratic. the time but erratic <laughs> that's the word I'm quite erratic anyway and that's me walking with my record box <laughs> I'll get that's just what I'm where, what it was like I get up I get an idea and I'm doing it yeah, you yeah. know and that's sort of stuff and I realized when I was smoking weed that was calming me down yeah. it, you know what I mean yeah. I wasn't Try it wasn't doing anything but calming me down. Yeah. And yeah, I think I'm, I'm mixing better and all of that. And then the alcohol, is, I don't know what, what is going on. Yeah. It's just okay. mix up. <laughs> all right, so, um, so yeah, so, I mean, you went ended up over there. Did your, because um, obviously it makes a change in you. People were going to see your change when you start yeah. doing, dip, dabbling in different drugs. It makes you, yeah, you, yeah, you 100%. Have changes. So did, did your friends and that notice them changes in you? Here's the thing. I, Sorry, because I'm going to say as well. Yeah. Obviously, certain people are selling as well, so they know. They yeah, see yeah, the yeah. Traits yeah, some, yeah. Some people do. Some people don't say nothing. Some people mm. know. Eventually, it goes from a secret to being, to being like, oh, this person might knows now, and then that person knows, yeah. and then eventually, I oh, do they know? And then to assuming that everyone knows, yeah. and some people may not. Some people may know. They may not know how bad it is. Yeah, because a lot of this stuff when I started speaking openly about what I was going through, he was like, I didn't know you was that bad, but I like to say that no one knows what anyone does when they close their door at home. True. No True. one. Like, the person you see smiling with everything, all the material stuff, any outside thing does not fix what's going on inside. Yeah. 
and I know that now. So, so I had to learn the hard way. Really bad, suicidal. Uh, did you did you like get in debt and stuff like that? Obviously. Of course, of course, it's comes with it. It's yeah. part and parcel, isn't it? I made a lot of bad choices. I mean, look, me wearing this mask and doing like uh, playing a chameleon. Let's just say. That led me to using that in a criminal way. Yeah. I went to prison, um, you know, what and I was doing for, for fraud, yeah? yeah. And I was doing that for a long, very long period before yeah. I ended up in there. I won't, but yeah. yeah. And, um, and that's because I felt I was good at, you know, being yeah. a comedian. So in regards to depression then, did you find because you was feeling depressed, you started using more as well? Yeah, 100%. So this yeah. is what I mean, like, Obviously, with getting a bit of education around me around the illness of addiction yeah. and that, um, it's all the more things that I did that was made me feel uncomfortable. The more I would use in order to forget about it. Yeah, escape. Now, escape. But I used to when people used to say that I used I've seen programs, I've heard stories, and it's like I oh, just used to use so I can forget about whatever yeah. or at least be like no you don't yeah. remember this is me no you don't yeah you like it so <laughs> lying. that's the one no i swear to you but real talk now i'm educated i know that that is why i was doing it but subconsciously not yeah. consciously so did you have like did you have because obviously you was hanging around with some people did you have any good people around you that was actually trying to be there and support you 100 percent, but no one couldn't help me till I wanted to help myself. Yeah. I, I tell you the story when I was gonna go when I when I went to rehab, yeah. So there was a, a my mum and my my partner I'm with now, yeah, was trying to check me into this place. And it must have been like for two weeks we're waiting for like a this a waiting list and yeah. waiting for a date, yeah. And I've gone out on one of my mad nights and I've come back in the morning, yeah. And this is a time I'm like, yeah I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm gonna go. And I'm in my head I'm thinking, I'll just go for them. Yeah? Yeah. Like, well, that's the problem. You need to, to know that exactly. So I've come back this day and I've just had enough. I'm in tears. I've had enough. Don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. I'm praying everything's going. <laughs> I've just had enough. I'm trying everything to stop. Yeah. Let me tell you, that day, after that day, I never used again for the next two weeks. But I called them, the people I needed to call. And they said, come in on the Monday. And then they, they, then, then they got, um, there was a COVID in there, so they couldn't admit anyone, yeah? So then I had to wait another week, but I didn't use for that whole two-week period. And when I got there, I, I realised that. And the first, one of the first things they said when I got there was, if you're here for anyone else other than yourself, this is not going to work. If you're here for your mum, your kids, if nothing is nothing's going to work yeah. if you don't want to be. If you don't want this yourself, you're here for, on behalf of anyone else. It's not going to work. Where was it that you went? Like somewhere in South London. Okay. Somewhere in South. So London. how did you find that? Because again, I know people that have to go through yeah. this, and again, yeah. it is something people are afraid to talk about. People are afraid to reach out. Yeah. So how did you know where to go, or did someone find it for someone you? Someone found it for me. There are places. You just there are places. Use the helplines. There's fellowships about. You can go and look. If the thing is, if you if I if you really want it, it's there. Yeah. On the plate. Google but is as powerful. You, said, you had to wait two weeks. Ah. So I say someone might be in dire straits that like, I need help today. Yeah. And, and, and again, I know this is another part of it. Mm -hmm. If you've got money, you can go and check into somewhere straight yeah. away. Yeah. And I know that if you, if you obviously, if you haven't got that money. Yeah. What happens but this is, this is, the, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Watch this. You know how many times I was sitting there feeling sorry for myself because it's a very common thing for someone like me to go on a madness. And the next day, feel sorry for myself and yeah. say, I swear to God, I'm never doing that again. Put me on a lie detector, put my hand in fire. I swear to you, it's going to come back that I'm never want to do it again. Yeah. yeah? But so you feel I don't, time. yeah, but, but, but I don't know what's going on with me. Yeah. I can't do this on my own. So that, even that in itself, is a lie that the people, but, but it's not a lie. It's just that people are not aware enough that there is help out. Do you know how many rehabs are out there you can go into that you don't require money for? Mm. There is enough. Some may have weight in this, yeah. They may have weight in this and they'll guide you into what to do in the, in the meantime while you're waiting. But even if you're in the madness and you're still at it, you, there's a place they're waiting. Yeah. And if you really, 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 really want it, you're going to get it. Yeah. 
Yeah. So that was that was you. You went to this place. Mm -hmm. Was it somewhere that you was checked into, or was yeah, it somewhere yeah. that you just go every day? Like what? No, what I, was I, it? I, it's a residential rehab. I was there. The first thing was twelve weeks residential. Mm -hmm. I was in there. I could still leave, come back by ten o'clock, go out on the weekends and stuff. I was like I was in jail. Yeah. And I think it was very useful, like meditation, acupuncture, a lot of like group therapy and per, like one to one therapy, things like that. Very useful. Then I went on to a second stage, and then, yeah. So if I mean, if there was anybody out here now yeah. that is listening today, like what, and they feel like they need to reach out and they need help and they're scared or ashamed, as you said, yeah. it's a shame thing as well. Yeah. It's like, like what advice would you give to them, and like where would you guide them to look? Right, there's places to look, yeah, and to go. There's helplines, and there's obviously places where people go and meet with similar, similar. Um, similar addiction with people yeah. with addictions yeah now my thing was i'll speak on my experience yeah, yeah? because i don't like to give advice i'd rather share my experience and if someone Something gets something like yeah so i was thinking what if i go to this place and someone recognizes me like think about the madness what i'm yeah, saying yeah. what yeah. if i go to somewhere to get help and someone recognizes me so that was your ego my ego, 100% yeah. my ego, but not just that, it's delusion. Because yeah. if that person's in there as well, they need help too. Yeah. So what am I running from? Yeah. You know, and like, what is, what, I had to question, like now, I can look back on my mad thinking there and just think, what is more important to me? Like, someone, what someone thinks of me or yeah. what I think of myself. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Definitely. And how I feel or my life. Like, basically, this is my life because if I carried on doing what I was doing, I'd be yeah. dead. So what was yeah. the breaking point? What was um, your, where would, what got you to that stage that you was like, um, you said you felt you got there a few times that like, I can't take this no more, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. What was that final breaking point that you're like, I'm done. Seriously, yeah, so, I mean it and I'm going to do this now. Yeah, but the, the thing is, it wasn't this one thing. I've done... I wouldn't go into some of the stuff, but I've done nearly every three days or every week would have been someone else's rock bottom, yeah? And I had those all constantly to the point where the thing that made me surrender, I say, and say, you know what, I'm done, wasn't even that big anymore. It wasn't even that big. Yeah. If you could put it to like putting stones in a backpack, putting stones in a backpack, and then one day I put one in and it was just too heavy. Yeah. <laughs> and... um. Another thing I wanted to ask you about was like your triggers. So what were your like trigger points that would make you go go like because I know people go yeah. out on vendors for days and yeah. whatever. What would be like a trigger point for you? So, or right. is it was it just I'm, fun? I'll I'll tell you this, yeah. What I learned this is first of all, what I what happened was if I drink alcohol instantly, I'm gone. One sip and I'm off. You won't see me. Yeah. yeah? A restaurant, a bar club a date everywhere everywhere yeah so anything could be there was a time when it was the gym madness yeah. that's the, towards the end i was going to the gym and you see my thinking i do it once i do it again and again i could go to a place you know a yeah. person could be a trigger for me yeah. and, and it, it still can yeah but I, do you know yeah. what i would say like through my own experiences i found myself moving away from certain people avoiding the clubs yeah. Like trying not to go that club because I know if I go to a club again, yeah. I'll have the, I had the point where I'll be like, I didn't have that cut off point, so I would drink, yeah. and I'm like, yeah, that's it. I'm like, I get to that point, and that's it. That that point, close to that point, there's no stopping, yeah. and it would be like, I'd end up going like after parties, drinking yeah. again. It's like there was no um, cut off point, and again, it, I, I feel like being around, and again, as you said earlier on, mm. I had to take responsibility for myself but I feel like I had to take myself out of cer certain circumstances and from being around certain people yeah look, another thing is yeah look I even like things like I said I would move away and all of that I'm gonna go here I'm gonna move house I'm gonna move area I'm gonna move country I'm gonna do all, I still take me with me in it mm. so I'm, it don't matter where I put me I will still do the same thing but what I wanted to say is as well what I, what I realized is is that it's not just places and people and things like that. It's a feeling is what will trigger me. Mm. So because I'm not used to sitting with myself, like I said before, and just being me, happy with me, 
So if I feel shame, embarrassed, yeah. guilt, um, happy, sad, any sort of feeling, yeah. I don't want to feel it because it's I'm uncomfortable. I'm not used to doing that. So yeah. I suppress that, suppress that. And the more things I do to make me feel that way, the more it's I'm going to do it. Feel yeah, the, well. exactly. So the more I'm going to keep doing it, and that's what I didn't understand. So you see, now I ain't just had to stop using. I have to change my whole behavior. Like I had a lot of behaviors that was just. It's not just about putting that, that down. That's yeah. just the beginning. It's not, imagine I've been suppressing my feelings for 23 years. I, things are coming up for me I didn't even know existed. It's Some of these always going to come up. I'm telling you, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And with that. What do I do? I need to have a way to do it. Like, yeah. I have to manage my addiction every day. Like, every day I do something for my addiction, for my recovery. Yeah. Sorry. I have to manage my recovery every so day. So, where are you in your recovery? How long have you been in recovery? At the moment, at the moment right now, I'm like seven and a half months. Yeah. Okay. But it's not my first run in recovery. Like, I went rehab the year before last. I spent the Christmas in there. Christmas and New Year's. Listen, wow. this is how you know. This is what I mean. If someone is out there, yeah, I will ask, you, ask yourself, are you willing to do whatever it takes to sort yourself out? Because if you've got any reservation around that, oh, yeah, but no. Yeah. You know, that's, that's how serious you have to be. Because mm -hmm. I was willing to go and sit myself down in, the, in there on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day with my big ego walking in there like I'm Mac 10. <laughs> you get me? <laughs> I've got all the stories. I know this one. Like, yeah. it's, there's none of that. And on top of that, you know the stigma around, like, I was thinking, what am I going to walk into? Because it's substances right across the board, mm -hmm. yeah? And don't, people always, I learned not to judge people by whatever substance they use. Because for me, now I know, it's just a feeling thing. I don't know what anyone's been through. And some things people take, that's just the thing that's up with them. For me, I think it's a coping me mechanism for a lot of people. Yeah. It is a coping mechanism. And you know what? I was saying to Deluxe earlier on before yeah. you came that I'm sure most people drink, but it's like, it's mainly alcohol. It's, mm -hmm. it's very acceptable. Yeah. And it's one of the, one of the worst drugs 100%. out there. 100%. But it's like, okay, so you have a stressful day. Oh, I'm going to have a drink. Yeah. I need a drink. I'm happy. We're going to celebrate. We're going to drink. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, again, it's, it's, ma it's been made very acceptable. So I think, me, when what I've got noticed is, um, I'll be like, Oh, I'm not drinking, and they're like, Oh, but a lot of people are like, Oh, you're so boring now. Why, what's wrong mm. with you? Why don't yeah. have a drink? Have a drink that people don't. And I'm like, We're supposed to be helping each other. Yeah. Like, if you see someone's going through something and they don't want to do nothing, why are you going to try and encourage yeah. them to do that? Um, I forget my point now. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's all right, but listen, what you're saying there, yeah, I've said this before. There's a thing with addiction that's explained in another way as an obsession of the mind and an allergy of the body, mm -hmm. yeah? And so obviously, for me, if I have one... My, listen, I can go... If, if I have one drink, my body don't know. I set off like a phenomenon of craving, yeah? But the obsession then starts, and I start obsessing about it. So I'll keep doing it, I'll keep doing it. And But the allergy of my body is that it don't... It, is allergic to it. I'm an addict. Yeah. So I'll keep doing it. I'll keep doing it. If you're addicted to to like peanuts, yeah, you're not gonna keep going and eating peanuts or whatever yeah. because yeah. it's gonna kill you. Yeah. It's the same thing with this, but we're so crazy, it's an insanity it's yeah. an insanity thing. It's a mental illness in my yeah. opinion. That you keep I will keep going back and doing the same thing knowing it's killing me. Because eventually it didn't turn to I'll, I'll do the touch on this as well. Remember it started off as fun. It ended with me on my own in a room for days. That's how it ended. Yeah. That's not fun. Yeah. The fun went out the window real early. When I look back, 23 years doing that, probably the first year or two may have been fun. 24 years. 23, 23 years. Wow. You could say 24, but I'll keep it 23. <laughs> <laughs> Add years in me. But yeah, no, that went out the window. But that again, that's in hindsight, isn't it? Mm. So. What did it do to your health? Did you have any? Have you had any health issues with that? After that's a I had time. blood clots in my lungs. Wow. Didn't stop me. Told me I was going to die. Didn't stop me. I just keep it real. This is how insane it can make me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And you know, if I, I've done loads of things with good intentions, and this this thing would have not allowed me to to do what I needed to do with the intentions I set out to do. So yeah. it would always always go to its up. Okay, so um, what you're going through now, 
that mm. is just an observation because I've been on a bit of a spiritual path myself. I know yeah. people don't really like to talk about things like this, but yeah. this is a part of me okay. and I'm not ashamed of it. So um, you seem to be on a similar kind of path. You're talking mm-hmm. about like meditation and stuff. Yeah. Um, so one of the children, one of the reasons I wanted to stop drinking was because it was triggering anxiety and depression as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of my coping mechanisms for the anxiety was meditation. Yeah. Um, so has this been one of the things that's helped you in your recovery? A hundred percent. And you know what? They, they, it is. Um, you've heard of the twelve step program, yeah, obviously. I have. Now, meditation is a massive thing in recovery. So sorry, some yeah. people don't know about the twelve steps. What is the twelve steps? The twelve step program was put together by a group of individuals to structure a way to unlock like just to get more in line with your true self and be honest with yourself so that you can let go of the baggage you may be carrying that you don't realize or i didn't realize i was carrying and that was affecting me and that i was blocking out because it's not something you walk i walked around like knowing so when it's a program that's set out to unlock all of this and unpack it all leave it on the just leave it behind and just free you up from whatever you're carrying, yeah? yeah. So it's, it's, um, sorry, let me just ask a question there. So when you realize mm-hmm. that that you had all this baggage, mm-hmm. and then because I know what it's like to have a, you go through these serious mm-hmm. releases, yeah, like it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's so going through that, like when you realize, geez, I've got all this, like that could have been another, that could have been like, oh, oh my god, that like, and that you could have gone back so. It's, it's not unheard of. It happens a lot. It's very common. People yeah. do do that and end up not being able to face it. It's too painful. Yeah. It's and a end lot. Up it's a going lot backwards. On. Yeah. Um, is this, this thing um, makes me look at is everything around it completely different. Like, I don't like it. I've seen what it does to people. I've seen good people um, destroyed by it. I've met good people that you would never believe the stories, what they said they was and how they was, yeah. where they came from and how they was living. If you looked at them, you would never know. Yeah. And you, I'd met, meet them on like first time basis, like in the rehab or so, or outside of there. And you're just like, well, I can't, I haven't met that person. So this person was just destroyed by something. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, but again, it's a, it's a, it's a me thing. Yeah. Because yeah. another thing, I, I, I sorry. <laughs> So I talk about this all the time. So this but, is what you're here for. <laughs> look, this, is, this is what I mean. It comes with vices as well because it's just an addictive trait, if that makes sense. Like, people don't have to... Someone could be an addict and it not use drugs. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm, like, I'm, I'm a very addictive person. Exactly. Like so My be, addiction now is a gym. Yeah, see? Yeah. Gym. So do you know what happens? Like, All right, cool. So it could be the gym. It could be people. It could be food. It could, it could be, be shopping. Yeah. Like the gym, cars, I don't know, clothes, any any yeah. sort of thing that you, you're fixated on and it makes you feel better, that's yeah. why you do it. Yeah. That could be an addiction, yeah? Unfortunately for me, I picked up a, a drink or drug. Do you know what I mean? Um, I forgot what I was going to say then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good point though. Yeah. Um, yeah, so continue about the 12 steps. Yeah, yeah, no, that's basically it. I don't want to go too deep into it, but that's it. Because if I talk about it too much, it may. I don't want to get anything wrong from one. I don't want to scare anyone away from. Just, just, just go and get the help, and it's out there. You'll see. I don't think it's a scary thing, though. I don't because it's obviously look at you. Yeah, I know. Thank you. I listen. I never thought I would. I would get to this day. Listen, let me tell you. I had some reservations around certain things, um, because, like I said, I went there. With my ego, very difficult. Remember, I said it was my second time this time round. Yeah, so I've gone, I've gone there. I've never done anything like this before. Uh, I tell you how it went. Yeah, so I've called them up. Yeah, bear in mind I had other things I was using steroids. Is, sorry, is this after you've been in the rehab center? This is the first time. Yeah, okay. so the first time, I'm, you might have seen me before. I'm probably more near my natural weight now, but I was using steroids for a long time. Yeah. Now, they make you quite agitated, yeah. also a high libido, let's yeah. just say. And I had a previous past of acting out a lot around my relationship, I would say, yeah. So I'm going to 
Sorry, Yum, if you're listening, she's probably listening on this. <laughs> she knows. I'm yeah, but she knows where yeah, really yeah, yeah. She's is, forgiven yeah. me. But um, also. Is she having a good woman that's helped you through this? A hundred percent a good woman. <laughs> she stuck by me, man. Listen, listen, if, without that, I don't know. Trust me. Trust me. You need someone you can trust around you. It's really, really helpful. Yeah. Um, but so anyway, I've gone to this place. So now my thing is the gym and all of that, yeah? So. And I like to fix myself pictures, posting clothes, all the nonsense, yeah? So anyway, they've told me, yeah, come on. I'm like, what's the food like there, yeah? Because they, they food, they're like, yeah, there's <laughs> loads of food. There's a buffet. I'm like, yeah. I said, what about gym? Am I allowed to go gym? He said, yeah, you get free gym. Like, there's a leisure center up the road that gives free gym, yeah? So my head, ping, straight. I'm going there, bringing all my stuff with me. And then, boom, I'm there. I'm just getting massive, doing all of this stuff. And then they would like, you get someone like a mentor that you speak yeah. to, yeah, that you can confide in. It's called something else, but I would okay, just call it yeah. a mentor, yeah. And um, I told him what I was doing, and he's like, You can't do that. Get me? And he said to me, I can't work with you as long as you're doing that because it's not going to work. And I was like, Why did I tell him? Because I want to <laughs> do things my way. And yeah, listen, there's a structure yeah. to this that if you don't too. follow and are very strict with, you, the so chances did you are you're going to. Yeah. Using steroids as being a part um, of your addiction, then? No, I didn't because they say any mind altering substance yeah. is a drug. Yeah, so alcohol is a drug in recovery. Alcohol is a drug. Yeah, yeah? It is. it's a drug. It, it's a drug anyway. Yeah. yeah. So what I'm saying is, I was doing that, and I was told not to do it, and I didn't listen, and I was, I was still stuck on my music. I was told not to go like raving so early yeah. in my in my recovery. And but I want to do it my way, innit? And yeah. I'm one of them people. I need to learn. Yeah. You can't tell me I need to know for myself yeah. because, in a way, it was a blessing that it happened, but it wasn't when it happened. But anyway, I ended up. I didn't listen. That was my reservations, and I yeah. ended up going back, but worse. Everything was tenfold when I relapsed. But then, do you also think that you needed to get to that stage? You needed to go for that worse. I needed to. I needed to. Yeah. And that was that was my that was my my bullshit card that I told had for myself like I know I've got this bullshit card here that I'm going to use that I need to try for myself yeah. but trust me if you're out there don't try it please because I nearly never never got back yeah. and I heard it and I didn't understand but if that's your journey that's your journey yeah. but I feel like yeah. I feel like with anything there's a point where you come in life which is you hit rock bottom Yeah. and when you get to that stage it's like you know what, it's a good place to be because the only way from that is for you to go up. But I've, what I've learned is every every rock bottom has got a trap door. There's another one I waiting. For you. There's another one door. waiting. There's another one waiting. You see, look, I'll take this is back to... Is it a trap door or it's is a it trap a test door. of strength? It's no, there's no tests. There's no tests. I can't test myself. I can't afford to test myself. This is why of me testing myself is mm. like hanging off the ed, ed, edge of a, of a building with one foot off. That is... <laughs> I have to be that extreme. Yeah. I have to think that extreme for me, yeah? But this is what I was saying about, you see substances, yeah? What I was saying about the judgmental mental side and we're saying about there's another trapdoor. Yeah. You see the people who go on to certain harder things or further and end up doing worse, you may call worse or bad things to get what they need. Yeah. Those people didn't start like that. Yeah. They've gone through the trapdoors. Yeah. They may have started like everyone else, just yeah. having a drink with their mates, smoking a bit of bud, then it's going on to the other thing. Gradually, they all those things, there's a saying in recovery, yet. Yeah. I just didn't happen yet, that's all. I just didn't get to that point yet. Yeah. Who's to say I wouldn't have gone on to be one of those people sleeping in the in the shop door? It could have easily been me as well. Yeah. Like, I don't judge anyone now. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Because it's it's just, be if, if well. I lose what I'm doing, I can easily end up like that. It's just yeah. important I remember that. So, um, so now you're on the, the twelve steps program. Yeah. Um. Like, what is the that? Where do you see yourself going now? No, sorry, no, I will scrap that. Sorry, I want to ask. What made you? Because that is that takes a lot of courage is to be so open how you are to talk about it. Like, mm -hmm. where did you find that strength and courage to be like? Do you know what I'm going to talk about this? Especially as you said yeah. in our in the music industry. Yeah. No yeah. one's talking about it yeah. because people are afraid to talk about it. People are ashamed to talk about it. 
the cause of the same thing. This is a stigma and a stereotype of what it looks like and what people are going through. People don't. I I talk for me. I didn't. I felt shame because I thought it, I was the only one. Like a lot of the things that I went through when I got to rehab, I was like, "There's a guy over there who does something I don't do." Yeah, but under underneath the the, the, the substance, yeah. we are exactly the same. We move the same. It doesn't listen. I've met people in there who like weed, who's yeah. got the same exact same personality traits and do done the exact same things for that alcohol. Everything, it yeah. just doesn't matter. Yeah. So, I forgot, I've lost my trailer of thought there. So, saying what made you feel that, that what, what? Yes, this is it. This is it. So, I just wanted to go and show that, look, there's, is there, it's all right. Like, I didn't know. If someone spoke, I don't know what it is. I just felt like I wanted to share that it's all right. Like, I've been there, I've done it, and I thought shame, and uh, it's all right. Yeah. Like, it's all right. And in you opening yeah. up, have you, have, have, is there people that have come to you now, like people within the industry that now yeah, 100%, can come to you? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, man. And uh, you know what? I'm here for it. Yeah. You know, if anyone does personally know me and reaches out to me, I'm going to point them in the right direction if they wanted to go where I went or anything yeah. like that. Of course, I would. So, uh, what is in the what is now in the future for for you? Well, at the minute, it's just you know. Just, is it, do you have to take it day by day? Is it yeah, like, every day, every day. Every day, like this is another thing I would like to to, like I said, like I do, I got to do this every day or do something for my recovery every day. But one thing when I find myself sort of going off into the future, like oh, I got to do this for the rest of my life, is I tell myself I've only got to do it for today because tomorrow ain't happened, yesterday's gone. I've only got to get my head on my bed, my head on the bed at the end of the night yeah. and wake up and do it again. I think that's how we should be anyway, like to yeah. it day by day. Like, yeah, yeah. Because again, we never know what's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah. We don't know. So then we, that again is something that does trigger anxiety is because mm. people are so ahead of themselves, so ahead yeah. of life. It's like you're actually missing what's happening here yeah, right now present. at this time. Yeah. 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 So, um, well, I was going to ask you about your future, but. <laughs> yeah, no, you can ask me, about, ask me about my future, man. I've got a rave coming up. No, I've got to get the plug in. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get me. I got to get the plug in. Away. You, well, we, we are right, cool. No, Tell me I mean, when. <laughs> I wanted to know, like, like you are yeah. helping people. Yeah. Like you've got your podcast. Like yeah. honestly, that po- I, I'll be honest with you. I'm not have been a quad po- podcast person. Yeah, yeah. But I sat there and I watched a couple of the podcasts, and I was just like, I actually wish that I was sitting there so I could get involved in the conversation. Yeah. Um, but it's like. What are the plans for your podcast? Like, yes. what is your podcast? Yeah, so my podcast is called the No Q Podcast. It's called the Q. I wanted to call it the Q for No Q card, like it's just off the cuff. And um, so yeah, it's just about recovery and and recovery and addiction within the creative industries, not just music. So we, you know, these things go hand in hand. The cameras, yes. graphic designers, actors, actresses, artists. artists, all different things yeah. across creative industries. You know, it's just a common thing. Everyone, you know. My, well, my particular choice of thing which was very is very it's used quite commonly yeah and um it doesn't matter anyway I, yeah it doesn't matter about the substance but just yeah, yeah. just right across the board these things are so um where is that where are you taking that podcast like is it a monthly thing I mean, is sorry it, i like, keep yeah. down off <laughs> <laughs> sorry it's all right i brought you back <laughs> yeah 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 well done thank you <laughs> All right, so yeah, we done a pilot. We done three episodes, which was pilots, three was it episodes, yeah, three episodes, which are pilots, and I'm going to be doing that again in the near future, like next few yeah. months. So you can go and listen to watch them on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, the No yeah. Q podcast. Really, really, really. Honestly, that was so like it was so. It was actually I felt myself actually a bit emotional because yeah. I mean I never knew you really, really well, but yeah. obviously we I knew you and like I don't know. I, I've known people go through stuff and. As you said, you don't know what goes on behind the closed doors. I would mm-hmm. never, I would never imagine that you would go through that because mm-hmm. you, you, you was quiet. You was always quite quiet. Yeah. You've always been humble to me. Yeah. So and now seeing you going through that transition, going through that, and now what you're doing now, like that, that is so powerful. Yeah. It's so powerful, like, and it is. It's. I know a lot of people out here today have been, have been touched by by what you're saying, yeah, and I feel, I feel like this is just like. 
we could have gone on for ages. This is yeah, like yeah. touch the surface, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's again, it's a start. Yeah. Um, what other projects have you got going so, on? So, first, I'd like to say I'm very passionate about this stuff and I love it and I could talk about it all day. It's close to my heart, it genuinely is. I get emotional sometimes. I just get really emotional speaking about this, but I, I, it's got a lot easier. But um, I've got the Box Park, 9th of June, four-hour <laughs> special, <laughs> Matt 10. <laughs> Playing the whole time, loads of MCs. Every MC you can imagine is going to be in madness. The tickets are free. They're available on the Box Park website and Eventbrite. And yeah, follow me at DJ Mac 10. Big up Louise, Deluxe, Deja Vu, the whole family. And I want to come back here. I want to bring a grime set back here. You're hearing it here. <laughs> Deluxe is there. I'm going to get all the man them here. And we're going to do this very soon in the Deja Vu building, man. Well, what I actually yeah. want to ask you, um, so obviously this is all new for me. Yeah. Um, it's been a natural progression, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Um, and I, my thing is not, it's not actually the DJ and stuff. It's not the music. Obviously, I have a love and a passion for music. Yeah. Um, but I have went and, went and purchased some decks. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. DJ Loopy Lou, yeah? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so what advice could you give me on DJing? Because it's um, it's not as easy as it looks. It's not as easy as it looks. But when you first start off, it, it's, it, it, it's when that's when the juice is. That's when it's fun, good fun. It gets a lot better and it gets a little further in. Anyway, let me not scare you. Listen, basically, <laughs> just focus on selection. That's my problem. So this is, a, when you were saying about being erratic, Yeah. my music, what I listen to, is very erratic. So yeah. <laughs> I do like rhyme. Yeah. I like jungle. I like garage. I like house. I like soul. I like... So like why can't I'm you like, play them all? Because... Yeah, yeah, you just find a way to structure them so it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, you're giving yourself a tough job, but listen, when it's done right, it's banging, and yeah. it's not. I know you can do it. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to and stick I'm to trying. one thing. I'm trying, yeah, and I've got my decks now, so I'm yeah. testing it out. Um, well, you know what? I'm just that. Like, I'm so grateful that you came on today. Honestly, Thank it you. means a lot for me. Thank you. I'm grateful um, too. You are a legend. Thank you. You are, and um.
Sounds of the Big Bad Food. From back in the day and beyond, it's Deja.